folks. I am here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I kind of came on this side of the river to take a look at the Perseus meter showers and I thought that I was going to catch it. It's a little bit late. It would have been probably better if I went outside the city to uh, you know, a little place where there's a little bit less light pollution. As you can see, Boston skyline, even uh, out here in Cambridge looking at, it's still pretty light. So I've been here for a while with my son trying to check out the uh, weight, uh, looking this app, finding exactly where to look for the showers but it's just too light and couldn't see what's going on so unfortunately did not get a chance to see the perseus meteorite showers tonight so i'm gonna have to wait another i guess one of a hundred years or so for it but in the meantime let's not let the night go to waste and i figured i would uh share a little video about calcified canals and that probably would be apropos because finding the canal in a calcified case is difficult much like seeing these meteorites in a, in a bright night. So I wanted to share with you this case and how I handled it, and um, I hope it helps. Alrighty, so this is a tooth that was referred for endodontic therapy, and I'm not talking about the molar that seems to have a lesion as well, and that's going to have an apico later on because of the large uh, lesion associated. Well, this is actually the premolar in this patient that has severe calcification, dystrophic calcification. You can see a residual of the pulp here, though. There is an apical lesion, which is why the tooth is sensitive to percussion and the patient's having symptoms. So in cases like this, it's also a good idea to have a bite wing first, but in this particular tooth, whenever you see a lesion, you know you have a canal in here at about seven millimeters you can see there is some remnant of the canal. Teeth like this, I would recommend uh, to maybe do the initial axis opening without the rubber dam on so you don't get disoriented, but then you'd have to put the rubber dam on immediately after. So here using the saber cut bird that is about exactly seven millimeters to, the, to that shank area, I make an initial axis preparation using the external uh, landmarks of the cusp and so on. And then I get, and I can see now at high magnification, the area of dystrophic calcification. So I move on to the use of the ultrasonic and uh, E14D and E15D. And when I get a little bit closer, I actually inject a little bit of BC sealer right into the axis preparation. And what's nice about the BC sealer, especially the high flow is the radio opacity of it. It'll give you a very nice impression of what you have prepared so you know what you have done. So you take a quick x-ray and you can see, and you can oftentimes pick up that little tiny area. You can see a little needle point of the sealer that has a little bit different uh, uh, consistency and different radio opacity. That usually is where the sealer enters the root canal. And then you isolate the tooth immediately after with a rubber dam and you remove the sealer, which as, a, as you know, takes about four hours for it to set. So it's not a problem at all. It won't set. You use water and ultrasonic to remove it. And then you can actually see that little tiny area Area where the sealer has gone through a capillary action and you know exactly where your canal is. That's a nice little trick that uh, is possible as a result of this uh, premix by ceramic with high radio opacity, such as the BCC or high flow. So then at this point, you could be using an X Explorer followed by hand files. I'm not a huge fan of hand files, but this is a more advanced technique. I would recommend that you use the hand files, but I do use this 15 ESX, uh, or you could use also the EndoSequence Scouts 15. And then I follow through with my protocol of the EndoSequence blend here, so that I could quickly prepare this canal using, as you can see, just light motions followed by irrigation and disinfection and so on. And just to kind of cut the long story short, proceed to uh, finally be able to fit in a size 3504 for a fairly conservative access preparation and uh, overall preparation. You can see hydraulic condensation here. The tooth is uh, filled up and the patient comes back a month later and everything is doing well. And uh, now we're ready to proceed with the other uh, tooth. So this is the only case that I want to share with you and this little technique with the user BC sealer. Okay, so as you saw, this case was handled using the endosequence sealer as a method of finding and tracing, getting the anatomy of the uh, of the where you've been drilling as a means of trying to get an impression of your axis preparation, if you will. It's a little trick. I figured it might be helpful to you. I wanted to share that with you. And this is a case that was done using that way. All right, well, after having waited now for quite a bit here, about an hour or so, looking at a place for these meteor showers, there was none, so we're gonna miss it out this year, hopefully next year. I would have started and gone out of the city a little bit earlier, except that I had a webinar that I had to give tonight until very late at night, until like 10 o'clock. And I, right now it's about midnight and I got patients uh, tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna head back home uh, with my son and hope this video was helpful to you. All right guys, see you soon.